No foundation, no BB cream, not patchy, not flaky. Hopefully the audio is okay without a clip-on mic, but I wanted to just narrate um, how I kind of go about my usual makeup routine. First step is primer. This one is the one that I love. It is by Benefit Professional. When I was in China, I applied this every single day and it literally saved my makeup from melting off my face. A lot of you guys and me included may notice that when you put your makeup on, initially it looks beautiful, flawless. And then just an hour or two later, it starts separating and it starts flaking. That's why I start off with primer. Let me see if I can show you guys. This is what the primer looks like. I'll just spread it so you can see the consistency. And I'm just gonna kind of dab a little bit. So I just spread it in the areas where I have the most oil. I have oily combo skin. No foundation, no BB cream. I simply just do a really good concealer in the spots that I need it. This is the best concealer I have ever used, ever. It is this one, Hourglass. And it not only has high coverage, you can make it natural, you can make it lighter. It is very buildable. But what I love the most about this concealer is the finish. So I work one area at a time. I have some acne scars. I'll just put pictures up to remind you guys how far I've come with my skin. Um, and these acne scars are just really, really difficult to lighten because they used to be so dark and so pigmented. And the fact that it can be at this level today, it's all because of carnivore diet, because of what I changed with the food that I'm eating. This is the sponge. It is bouncy, cushiony. Do not rub, smear, move your makeup all over the place. Using a brush like this one, like a foundation brush brush, you risk creating a streaky look if you're not careful, if you don't blend enough and it just tends to move the makeup all over the place and if you're wearing a sunscreen underneath a brush like this tends to cause a lot of pilling a sponge like this is so that the makeup stays where you want it you just pat it in so before i apply i use a bottle of plain water i spray the sponge spread out that dampness on your hand you start going in and this is also good for maintaining the laxity of our skin because we want to avoid at all costs tugging at our skin. You simply just pat, pat, pat. We have one side finished. And then I have some darkness under my eyes and I've got some redness in the corners of my nose. So I pat there. In the light, we're gonna go in with a powder. This is the one that I have been loving. This was another product that literally saved my face when I was in China because where I'm from in China, it is a city by the water. So it is extremely hot, but extremely humid. So I'm literally just walking outside in a sauna. As you can see, it's just powder and they give you a sponge, but I just use a brush to apply the powder. I'm just gonna use this type of brush. I can just do this. So same technique. Pat, do not blend, do not rub, because that's just gonna move your makeup and cause streaks. And we want our makeup to look exactly like how we applied it and stay put, because I do have oily combo skin. This blush, guys, is a drugstore blush. It is affordable and it is by the brand Milani, 05 Luminoso. All of the YouTube beauty channels were obsessed with this blush. And this was back in when I was in high school. So I've been loving this blush ever since I was in high school. So I just kind of pat it, tap it. You want to use a stipple type of brush, a stipple brush again, where you can just kind of stipple it on pat it on no blending no sweeping you would be surprised how big of a difference blush placement makes on your overall look on how youthful you look 
if you place your blush here, like lower apple of your cheek, it just automatically makes you look older than what you are. If you place it higher, like top of your cheekbone, it gives you this fresh, youthful glow. Again, I am not sweeping at all. I am simply stippling it onto the area that I want. I'm almost like stippling it under directly my eye, like on my outer eye bag. And that's because I want to just create that really youthful flush. And I put a little bit on my nose bridge. I honestly do not move it any lower than like right here because any lower than here and it starts dragging your face down. You start almost lengthening your face and your cheeks and that doesn't create that youthful glow. Next thing that I do is just a little bit of uh, bronzer slash contour. Back in the day, and this is honestly like before China even, I felt like I tend to overdo the contour and put a little too much of, you know, bronzer contour on my face because I thought that, you know, that chiseled, snatched look was everything. And I tried to achieve that with my cheeks, with my jaw, with my nose. And once I got to China, I started learning having full chubby cheeks and more fat on the cheeks is a really good thing because it really aids in helping you age. As we age, we will naturally start looking um, more gaunt and our cheek fat will start to decrease. So I definitely learned to embrace my chipmunk cheeks. Just do it super, super light. Honestly, I just use the contour to kind of match my face to my neck. Kind of just even out the overall wash of color throughout my face and neck. So I use this type of brush. And again, I get a little bit of these two colors. This is by Kat Von D. It's very forgiving. So you can kind of just go everywhere. In China, all the girls use a brow pencil that looks like this. So as you can see, this pencil is super flat. Look, this is the side profile. It is so flat and so sharp. And the reason they purposely use brow pencils in this shape is because it can mimic brow hairs. Look, look at how thin it can draw. That type of thinness literally looks like individual brow hairs I kind of get up close and personal with a mirror just so I kind of draw the brows as, wow, it really draws real looking brow hairs. It's incredible. I just draw kind of individual hairs where I kind of have bald spots on my brow. It might take a little bit of practice, but I really just enhance my brows, the shape that it already has. So today I don't really want to do too much eyeshadow. Most days I actually just finish right here. Face makeup, skin looks great, brows are done, I'm pretty much done. And I still have the aqua for on my lips. I feel like this is complete for most days, but because I will be filming today, doing some meetings, I am going to just put a little bit of eyeshadow today. So this is the eyeshadow palette that I've been loving. This I got in China and the brand is actually Japanese. It's by a brand called Can Make and it is the hottest, most popular brand that girls absolutely love. It is cheap, but this eyeshadow is also super creamy, pigmented, very, very nice shine. So I take the lightest color and I kind of use it as like a, a wash all over the lid and I bring it into the inner corner as well. I go into my contour palette and I take the lightest color. It's a really good color to kind of um, bring out some dimension in the eye. And us Asian eyes, we just naturally have less dimension. Our eye dimension is a bit flatter. It's not as 3D. And I also take whatever is left of that contour and kind of bring it down to my lower eyelid. And 
that's that. When it comes to makeup and just any look that I'm after, my main focus and priority is just making sure the skin looks vibrant and healthy. I don't want to mattify my face. I don't want to add strobe lighting and make it look super unnatural, like a disco ball. So my classic look that I've always had, even in senior year of high school, uh, was a really nice, precise eyeliner wing. And a lot of you guys who follow me on Steak and Butter Gal and have watched my videos for a while have been asking, how do you do your wing so uh, precise? and what eyeliner do you use? I use liquid, liquid eyeliner. These are the two that I've just fell in love with. It is Japanese from Japan, and this one is also Japanese. I think Japan just makes the absolute best makeup. Their skincare products is also fantastic. This is by Dolly Wink. Close up, as you can see, Dolly Wink Love Liner. It's hard to tell. I purposely kind of just chose a lighter brown and this one is a bit of a deeper bolder brown it just makes such a huge difference in your eye look in your overall look because with black liner it is so harsh on my face and i don't do dramatic makeup anyway so like a black liner stands out so much i'll just show you both i'll first draw with this lighter one, the Love Liner. So I usually just outline on top of my lash line. When I pull out the wing, I make sure that my eyes are not like this because then I don't know how I'm gonna draw the wing. My eyes are almost half closed like this. Drag that wing out. The wing is basically an extension of where your eye line kind of stops. So as if you were drawing the eye and you just slightly slip, you don't want to draw your wing to the point where it's like that. You don't want to upturn it too much. My eye kind of sits like at this angle. It's not perfectly straight. It's a bit upturned. If you make your wing even more upturned, then your eyes will look like this. And it just kind of looks a bit funny. And then I finally go in with the last step for my eyes, an eyelash curler. If I were to do anything for my eyes, honestly, I would just curl my eyelashes because it really does a lot to brighten you up, to make you look more awake and fresh. So I just do a quick and the other side more wide awake. I don't think I look dramatically different, but I definitely look more presentable, I feel like. And the makeup really just enhances my features that I already have. This lip liner, I've been using exclusively this single lip liner for two years now because it is the closest color to my natural lip color. So this color on my lips right now is my natural lip color. It is not pigmented, I didn't tint my lips. There is no color. All I put on was the Aquaphor from earlier. This MAC lip liner pencil is fantastic because this color is just so carbon copy of this color. So if you like this color of lip, this is a very good color. Slightly line my lips. I don't dramatically overline my lips, like, you know, Kylie Jenner. I noticed that the girls in China, their favorite lip look is an ombre lip. As in, they put a very deep dark red in the inside of their lip from dark to light. I really tried and it always just looks so off on me. So I'm just gonna stick with what I know works for me and go in with a clear lip gloss. I loved this lip gloss before I went to China. It moisturizes so well, it kind of plumps up your lips and it has like this really nice minty, tingly feeling. So it's clear and I kind of just go in on the lip, spread it a little bit. And when I went to China, guess what? All the ladies are obsessed with this exact lip gloss. Uh, in the clear shade, but also the other shades that Sephora offers. As always, linked below if you want to check out everything. And that's it. This is pretty much my entire face. Let me see if I can get some natural daylight. So this is me facing the window, but it doesn't look any different, I don't know. But this is me under direct 
fluorescent light, okay? And the fact that I can still look this even, not patchy, not flaky, not um, dry, is because of the specific way I applied the makeup. The way that I, you know, patted only. No strokes, streaks, rubbing, brushing all over the place. It makes a huge difference. So, uh, I don't know how long this video is going to end up being because I shared quite a lot. You know, when I was in China, I really <laughs> had all the time necessary to dedicate my time to take care of my dad. But the moments where he didn't need me to actively take care of him and help him, I was just studying and learning all about self-care, all about skincare and makeup and just daily habits that I could implement to really make a difference in um, how I feel, how I look and age down the line. So I'm just really excited that there's this second channel and that I have the freedom to kind of just use this channel to film everything. And finally, I kind of just finish off my look with some really cute earrings. My mom was so sweet and she got me so many cute earrings. She is personally very much into like dressing up well and um, pairing accessories with the right look and the right outfit. She still looks like she's 40 <laughs> and she is now 63, I think. She also has like very full cheeks and plump cheeks. So that's how I know that, you know, because I have also very plump cheeks, I will probably age as well as her, I hope. And I feel very confident in the carnivore diet and eating. I'm just feeling really great about my whole routine when it comes to skincare and makeup. And do let me know, like, do you find any of this, these tips helpful? If you try any of them, I would love to hear about how it worked out for you. And if you have any other tips that you'd like to share with me, I'm super open to just trying new things when it comes to skincare habits and uh, makeup products. So feel free to comment it down below. As always, I'm just so happy and grateful that you are here watching this video. I am assuming that you are coming from my Stick and Butter Gal channel. I can't imagine anyone watching this who isn't from Steak and Butter Gal. So, um, hi, thanks for dropping by over here and I love you guys. I will see you in my next video then. Any video requests or questions, um, as always, feel free to comment it down below and I will make sure to answer the questions and film the video requests that you guys have. So have a beautiful day. I will see you guys in my next video or over at Steak and Butter Cow. Bye.